Welcome back to the Greenfinch project. Uh, this is the second part of us using colour. And uh, since the last episode, I coloured the Greenfinch completely with arillamide yellow as a base for the colours that are going on top today. So I decided that the green finch was slightly more earth coloured and I have three earth colours in my collection which I thought would be useful. Yellow ochre, raw sienna, uh, sorry burnt sienna and burnt umber. And here I am trying to knock back the yellow of the uh, arillamide yellow with the yellow ochre and immediately it has a dulling effect but I think it brings it a lot closer to uh, what the bird in the uh, reference photo looks like. I felt that the overall impression was that um, it was more brown than green. So, I'm using a flat brush here and I'm just bringing the darker levels to the same uh, level uh, of yellow ochre. Part of the crown, uh, around the eye and the underbelly. I'm only using Fast Fixer Medium from the Atelier Interactive range. And as I'm painting, I'm being conscious not to cover every area, but to leave um, those um, pure arillamide yellow sections as highlights or gloss or sheen on the bird. The photograph was taken in a nice sunny day, so we want some um, want some part of the bird to pop. There I'm working just under the eye. But in hindsight, I'm going to have to work even more on that area, even after um, the session concluded today. So the Fast Fixer Medium has the effect of turning the paint into a glaze layer, so even uh, more opaque colours become slightly more translucent. So even as the yellow ochre is going down, and yellow ochre, these earth colours are not particularly opaque, uh, you can see that what has gone before still influences the modelling of the uh, bird. You can see the form of the bird through the glazes still. Here I move on to a more reddish colour, the burnt sienna and I want to darken the eye and the crown a little bit more. So I've moved over to a fine pointed brush. If I, this was watercolour I would say that was a rigger. And I'm trying to create little short strokes to build up those little uh, feathers which are on the face around the, the beak. And now transitioning onto the back, you can see the red quality in the uh, burnt sienna. And I felt that at this point I had gone in too strong. But I needed something to dull down um, the yellow and I knew that subsequent layers, including um, green layers that I've got um, planned for later on, will also kind of neutralise this a little bit. So this rigger is ideal for uh, doing the kind of longer strokes on the back. And uh, even just patting the brush down creates a, a long line, uh, which is ideal for the feathers. 
here I am working on the underbelly and from time to time you can see me reversing the brush watch out for it uh, at this speed it's going to be hard to detect but I reverse the brush uh, turn it upside down and use the wrong end of the brush to scratch into the new layer while it is still wet but uh, I was finding that using this medium it makes the acrylic dry there we are uh, dry very very quickly so there I'm scratching the feather textures into the the layer that I've just produced on the underside of the belly it was successful because the paint was still wet but by the time I'd gotten to the back it made very little difference at all because the layer had already dried and there again some more scrafito um, used to build in those kind of feather textures which are uh, part of the challenge of painting this bird there's a little highlight there on the, the flank just above the leg and I want to reserve that as a kind of highlight otherwise there's a danger that the form could be lost and it just become quite flat Now at this point I have moved on to the last of my earth colours that I'm planning on using today. It's my burnt umber and immediately that darkens the underside and neutralises the warmth of the um, multiple glazes that I've built up on the underside. But I can feel that I'm approaching step by step getting a little bit closer with each um, glazing pass that I make I'm getting closer to the uh, reference photo however in close up I can see that far from the shadow area being you know uh, dull and monochrome there is actually you know quite a lot going on um, a lot of these colours can be seen although collectively the impact is that it's a dark underside there is still a lot of visual interest going on there with the colour even although that this uh, acrylic layer is really the underpainting for the final layers which are probably going to be artisan water mixable oil paints <laughs> There are some uh, shaded areas round about the the neck that I'm just bringing out a little bit and trying to darken that brow ridge and put in some feather details. Now at this point I'm aware that I haven't used anything that resembles green uh, at all and so I introduce a new colour along with my earth colours the French ultramarine blue and that in combination with the Naples yellow and the arillamide yellow uh, was used to create a very very soft grey with a um, kind of green bias on it there I'm doing that patting technique to you know build up some feather textures around the the cheeks and the ear area of the bird working on the beak here with burnt umber to show the uh, shadow area but if you look quite closely I have used uh, the burnt sienna which has got a reddish tinge to it thinly diluted to create a kind of pink on the beak and also on the foot area uh, this may have to be you know reinstated with um, something a little bit more pink but it has got a kind of gentle blush round about it which is um, appropriate and not displeasing at this moment but I may revise this
the waxy surface of the paper is something that I'm getting used to uh, working on. And there I've worked on with more layers with the grey and this is where we'll pick up uh, later on in the next episode. Thanks for watching.